Well, this is the northeast part of the grove, and it looks great. Uh, this time of year, it's got fruit, lots of new leaves, the trees are looking healthy, uh, and you think, gee, I was so lucky to have a place that I could plant mango trees and they would just flourish. Well, when I first planted these trees, they were small three-gallon trees, and it was a harsh situation. Uh, this whole area, there were like a lot of this land was actually so uh, sandy and dry that not even weeds would grow. There was one gumbo limbo, fairly small, that had survived, but otherwise, the former owners hadn't even tried to plant here. It was very extreme. So I was working in another part of the grove and I came up with a solution. Uh, I just want to show you uh, some of the old Hayden mango trees over here. And as you can see, they're at a fairly reasonable height. That's not been the case all along. Uh, the former owners really didn't believe in trimming trees, and these trees had gotten huge. They were more than four times the height that they are now. And, you know, of course, it was impossible to pick the fruit, uh, and it got to be pretty treacherous to even try and trim the trees. But while I was around here, I uh, was noticing that this was actually, uh, this soil here was a lot different from the white sand that we had in the rest of the grove. Uh, this has just got like organic matter in it. Uh, these big Hayden trees were dropping lots of leaves over the years, you know, close to a hundred years that they have been here. and. Of course, they changed the soil. Instead of being white sand, it, you can tell that there's a lot of organic matter that has you know, been added to it. So this organic matter was a result of leaves dropping from the trees and then also fruit that dropped and spoiled down here. So this was a situation that I thought we could apply to the other part of the grove, that north side of the grove. These trees are looking great right now, uh, but when I first planted them, they really struggled. And, you know, of course, the three gallon trees, it takes a while for them to develop a good root system. And we were watering at that time. We had uh, some spot irrigation and that kept them alive, but they really weren't thriving. Uh, the problem was, of course, that even weeds, grass, nothing would grow here. So fortunately, I knew uh, a company that, a tree trimming company that chipped up their, um, all the branches and stuff that they cut from people's yards. And they came over and dumped a lot of mulch. There were actually two different companies that were uh, you know, just dumping lots of mulch. And then of course uh, we would spread it. And that was the magic as far as getting these trees to grow. And in that circumstance, one of the other qualities of mulch really helped those particular trees to thrive. And that was, they would actually, the, putting mulch around the tree, not up to the um, trunk itself, but around the tree, around the root zone, it actually cooled the sand and so the, uh, the surface roots wouldn't burn. So those, that was great. Uh, we got a lot of these trees established well, but then uh, once we started trimming trees, we continued that. And basically when we trim trees, it's crazy. Uh, these trees grow a lot in a year and we have piles and piles of branches and we hire a company to come in and chip them all up. And right here is uh, sort of uh, the remnants of last year's chipping. Uh, the chipper was 
out on the drive and they blew the chips into the grove. And so these trees here that are close to the driveway uh, really have a wonderful situation. They're getting uh, lots of slow release fertilizer uh, in the form of chipped up leaves especially, but also the wood. And uh, so it really helps with our situation where I don't water these trees at all. But then once we get far enough away from the driveway, uh, you know, there's less and less mulch. And uh, you know, that's part of it. The machine can only blow the mulch so far. So this area uh, didn't have very much at all. And as you get further and further north, uh, there's less and less mulch. So that takes us to a little area down at the end of this row. which is here. <laughs> and this was just sand and uh, some small rocks. And then we had another tree company come in with a whole bunch of truckloads. I think there were five truckloads of mulch uh, that we put in this area. And they were, that was a lot of mulch. A lot of times if I have just a little bit of mulch, I'll spread it by hand. But this was not a situation that I uh, had enough time and energy to do that. So uh, we got this, I mean, it was good to have it sitting here for a while because when it's in a pile, it decomposes and it's more accessible to the plants. And also, I think it's a little bit easier to spread in a lot of circumstances. So we had these five piles of mulch and fortunately, I was able to get a um, skid steer uh, to spread this mulch all over the place. And so now we have this huge expanse of mulch. This part I left because there's always some circumstance somewhere in the grove where I want to have mulch to help a plant survive. And so now we have a small uh, pile of remnants of one pile of mulch. But all of the rest of the area here looks great. It looks like it's going to be a happy place for all the plants that are bordering this mulch area. Mm -hmm.